Yeah, I think all around us, all the time, there's lots of things happening that we can't see. Uh, every time that we uh, pay for something on a, on a credit card or every time we uh, make a, a phone call or uh, enter a building using a, a, a key fob or something like that, then there are machines that are talking to each other within our city. We always think of, of cities as places that are made of, of stone and concrete and bricks and glass, but in fact uh, cities are also made from, from networks, from machines, and, and although they're home to people, they're also home to, to computers as well. So I, I'm sort of interested to see this other side of the city, this, uh, this virtual city that we can't normally see. Um, and I think, yeah, this is something that exists al already around us every day. Yeah, it's really exciting to be in Milan here uh, in front of like so many prestigious people and, uh, and from lots of different backgrounds. Um, I'm going to be presenting uh, my vision of the future, which is called hyperreality. Um, and hyperreality is really trying to understand how emerging technologies at the moment can influence everyday life in the future. Um, it's not trying to predict what's going to happen, but it's trying to raise awareness of the questions that we should be asking ourselves now in order to make sure that the future is something that we've chosen. Uh, yeah. Um, I think you know a lot of the technological development in the world at the moment comes from the United States and they're very concerned with their culture of cars and so everything is about you know self-driving cars, smart cars, cities that are supporting cars. Um, here in Europe we're very lucky that, that we don't need to rely on the auto automobiles so much for our transport um, but also because of the older infrastructure we need to find increasingly uh, uh, more sophisticated ways to be able to deal with density and, and movement throughout the city. Um, one idea from science fiction, I think it's maybe from the 70s or something. I'm not sure, I, I need to find the name of the person, but uh, uh, it, it, it's a, an idea that uses travelators, um, like you get in airports, that you can step onto from the side and, uh, and be moving automatically. But then you're also able to move to the next lane, which is moving slightly faster. And by the time you've got to the seventh lane, you can be moving at 100 kilometers an hour. Obviously, it involves massive technical expense, but I'm, I, I quite enjoy these uh, slightly weird visions uh, that, that are produced in science fiction because you know you never know one day that maybe they are they, they do become a reality uh, well one thing we need to be clear on our terms because virtual reality is an idea that was very popular in the 90s which is this idea that you could put on a, a headset and you could go to a different world and you could be somebody else and uh, you could reinvent yourself all over again. What we're going into now is, is uh, a slightly different world which doesn't involve escaping from the present but involves adding things in. So uh, this, this kind of technology is called augmented reality and uh, it, it's uh, being developed at the moment as smartphone apps or as glasses or even in the future as contact lenses and it's going to allow us to to overlay information into space um, part of that means that we'll be able to see different things about each other so here studying in this space you'd be able to see things about me kind of floating around in the space as well so I think it, it can have quite a profound uh, change in the way that we deal with each other uh, the things that, that we would talk about for example that maybe small talk i.e. You know, talking about just the, you know, the weather or things like that or asking about you know, uh, your favorite color. <laughs> uh, some of those could change because we might already know that information. And instead of me walking into the square over here and seeing uh, you know, thousands of just anonymous faces, suddenly I, I have a relationship with each one of those people. I know that we like the same band or I know that we went to the same school. So I think it could be very different. Yeah, so one of the possibilities of augmented reality is that you're able to start to, to uh, add virtual elements into physical space. And it doesn't just have to be like apps, things like that, but it can also be about augmenting the architecture and being able to, to build virtually on what's already here. Um, 
some people might say that that's you know, not something that we need, and maybe they're right, but it's also when we open up uh, space as a form of media, suddenly it becomes a new form of expression. And I think it's a really interesting place for, uh, for cities or for companies or even for individuals to start to be able to, to add to, to their city. Um, obviously, this wouldn't always have to be visible. You'd be able to choose which layers of the city you see. Um, but I think that's one of the ideas that, that could open up a, a quite a new area of the arts and of the media. Yeah, I think uh, definitely that the possibilities of augmented reality are really, really large. Um, it seems at the moment that you can apply it to almost any industry and think about uh, a, a kind of a revolution that it could cause. Um, that the, there's two things now that are preventing this from happening immediately. Firstly is the technical uh, ability that at the moment even things like Google Glass are not very uh, interesting things to wear, like they, they don't look so great, um, people are not used to that idea and the functionality they provide is also quite limited. So there are technical obstacles. But there's also uh, other obstacles, cultural obstacles, which I think that I am maybe one of them. Uh, <laughs> because I don't think that just because we can do something then we should. I think it's really important to think about the effect that technology has on everyday life and thinking about what kind of future we want to uh, grow old in and we want you know, our kids to grow up in. Um, so I think you know part of how I see my work is to be able to uh, enable people to, to ask questions about technology and, and to form opinions on what sort of future they want. If they want it, then fine. If not, also fine. <laughs> but at least, sorry. But at least it will be a, a kind of a future that, that we've thought about, we've discussed, and we've chosen. concept of the expo is really interesting. Um, it's obviously I, I, I always think of the, an expo as something from the past, like this kind of grand exhibition that people would, would come to from all over the, the country, all, all over the world, uh, to, to catch a glimpse into the future. Of course now we have information everywhere, we are able to, to access any information that we want very, very quickly and we don't even have to leave our homes or you know, we can just you know, get, get it on our smartphone or whatever. Um, so the meaning of the expo has to change with that as well. And I think now the, real, the really important thing about um, expos is, is, is to provide uh, a kind of an excuse, a reason, and also a place for these conversations to happen. And I think that's really uh, what Milan should be focusing on, about, about promoting conversation, about giving the space to be able to experiment and explore these ideas, uh, because it's not about the exhibit anymore, it's about the people in it.